Hello, welcome to Taiwan. 我们这一集车场第一排呢，我们带 Ryan 教练来到台北东区一个很特别的地方。那这个地方呢，是在这两三年一个茶艺空间。然后我们在这一集呢，会带 Ryan 教练听一下台湾的茶的文化，因为毕竟他们在西方，其实对我们台湾的东方的茶的文化是比较没有那么熟悉。呃、uh, ，What's the vibe right now? How do you feel? Yeah, it's it's、uh, quiet. It's very relaxed.、Uh -huh. um, something like if you told somebody what a traditional tea house would be like, this is kind of what you'd feel.、Um, it's unique. I haven't been to a place like this before. Because I heard that you're not a coffee person. Not、you're, a coffee you're, you're person. You're more at all. a tea person, right? Yeah. If I had to choose, co coffee would be zero for me. <laughs> <laughs> so tea would definitely be the be the choice for so, me. So you might want to check this. So they said it's something like pine sand oriental beauty. Pine sand oriental beauty. Oriental beauty is the name of the tea. I heard that you very into、uh, like Asia or like like Chinese culture,、mm -hmm. and so I like treat you some like something different. Sure. Just put it all. Just put, just put it all in. Put、there. it all. Yeah, yeah, all in. All in. All in. All in. You are a United States basketball coach. Uh, coach. 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 Yeah, that's why you have a long time. Why? 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 You know, it's. I mean, you hear a few things that you know the coaches say, or just by their actions, you can tell what they're saying、like、without what? understanding. Like what? Like well, I don't know what they would say、okay. at all. Like, so I couldn't say the words. But you know, just seeing how、um, I've worked with you know not just players from Asia, but you know many players that don't speak English, and so you have to do it through demonstration. So you know, using your hands, walking through things, demonstrating how to do things.、Um, you know, it's kind of like a universal language, doing something a specific way,、um, so you can kind of learn. You know what people are saying without actually understanding what they're、yeah. saying. You've been ever coach in Vienna, and、uh, you coach here in Taiwan.、Mm -hmm. You ever coach in United States? What's、mm -hmm. the difference between like Western basketball and Asian basketball? Yeah, I think obviously the the level、um, of play is the biggest thing. You know,、mm -hmm. the size of the players at the professional level, that's the biggest difference. Um, but I think I think it even goes back further to the culture of basketball、um, outside of organized basketball.、Mm -hmm. So in the United States,、um, I mean here Vietnam is, is very new to basketball, but you know in Taiwan, you know you can find basketball courts you know all、Everywhere. over the country and play. So that's I think step one. But the intensity and how aggressive players are when they play outside—that's that's how you build toughness. In the United you, States, in Taiwan, or, in or in the United in States, States, you know that's the big thing. Playing on the blacktop,、um, you know, no fouls. If sometimes,、oh, right, right, right. if if you lose a game, you might not play for another couple hours. Yeah.、Um, so that culture starts before it even gets、um, into organized and professional basketball. So you learn to be tough. You learn not to lose beforehand,、yeah. um, because you know if there's 30 people waiting and you lose, you might not play for another hour or two. But but even then, won't you call foul once that if it, if you drive and or shooting that you get touched? Won't、mm -hmm. you call foul because but once you lose, you wait for like like three yeah like three so, or one hour. So that's why people fight. That's why、yeah. <laughs> if there's a foul call, sometimes you wait for five minutes before you play again. You know, arguing that's just that's part of the game, and you learn to play through those fouls. You learn to be tough. Um, you know, because you realize, you know, sometimes you might hear this, but、yeah. if it doesn't affect you going up, guys, like, hey, you, you have to make that, and you start to understand, like, hey, you have to, you do have to make that. You have to be tougher. But sometimes when you, when you play professional game, you have to to earn or like you want to to have your team someone's advantage.、Mm -hmm. but, but I mean, professional game is different. It's different, it's different from、yeah. the streets. It's different from the streets. Yeah. Right. 
so the ref can do a charge. Yep. In the streets, everybody's the ref. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Everybody's okay, the ref. Talking about the ref, would you share your like, experience to communicate with the ref in peeling this, this season? Yeah, it's... Anything interesting or anything you feel <laughs> frustrated or anything? Um, so I, I knew what to expect um, because it's not my first time coaching in a country where I don't speak the language. So what I actually there's um, before the season starts, you know, all the coaches they meet with the refs, they talk about things that might be a problem, and I went through the same thing in Vietnam as well. Uh, when the refs don't speak the language, it's like talking to a wall because yeah. they're not going to talk to you. Uh, most of them won't look at you. They won't engage with you. Um, a few of them that do speak English, um, sometimes they'll try to explain and listen, but. Even some of the ones that do speak English, they'll act like they don't speak English and just ignore you the entire game. So uh, the communication is very, very little. Um, so it just ends up being me kind of just yelling into the air. Ryan, he is in this system that is very strong. We know he is from Minnesota Timberwolves. He has been in the Spurs system as a G League coach. He has been in the NBA for a long time. 其实好像比较少问到他最喜欢或是最学习推动的 NBA 球员是谁。So actually, my favorite player didn't come from the Kings, but I loved all the players from the Kings. But、uh, growing up, like I loved watching Tracy McGrady. Tracy,、oh, Tracy McGrady. McGrady was my favorite player growing up.、Um, the first jersey I had when I was a little kid was Sean Kemp. I had the Rain Man jersey, the green Seattle SuperSonics jersey.、Yeah. But you know, like Tracy McGrady, Allen Iverson, like I love those guys. They had. They had like the game, but they had like a different style and swag. Like they weren't scared of anybody. They would go at everybody. They would talk to guys.、Um, they they just brought all aspects of it, which which I loved. But players from the Kings, like I loved all of them. Time Chris Webber was great. Bobby Jackson off the bench, you know,、yes. there it was such a fun team to watch. So that was unique, being able to see the Kings. Um, under Rick Adelman's system, and Rick Adelman was the first coach I learned under in the NBA. So it was really unique being able to watch him growing up, and then learn his system as well. It was the first NBA team I worked for. What will you learn from Adelman? I think、um, patience. Patience. Yeah, he was. He had a very old.、Uh, he had a much older staff,、um, and so you know the way they teached,、um, they understood that. You know, they knew what they were doing was was the right thing,、um, and so how they approached it, you know, it wasn't it wasn't just through yelling at guys all the time. It was through teaching,、um, and if anything wasn't up to standard, then they would hold the players accountable and get mad at them.、Um, but I think you know, from an offensive system, and Mike D'Antoni said this before, because a lot of people see. Mike D'Antoni is an offensive specialist. You know,、yes. he's with the Suns, the Lakers. You know, all he's been all over the place. The Rockets.、Um, he said he he learned the most from watching Rick Adelman. He's like, I just watch what Rick Adelman does.、Um, and so the offensive system that Rick Adelman had with spacing and putting guys in positions to be successful was really, really unique and very different. What you thought that first time we got an interview by a Titan in Happy Kings? Yeah, I was. Kings. Yeah, yeah, I I was excited because I knew、uh, some players. I'd coached some players. Brandon Dawson, I coached about five six years ago in the、oh, G League. Oh, G League. In the G League,、uh, Steph, Steph Jankovic, who's with the Dreamers now.、Uh -huh. Him and Brandon Dawson were on the same team. I coached them together. Oh.、Um, I didn't know that. Yeah, and then Steph Hicks.、Um, I coached him over the summer when the Minnesota Timberwolves had a free agent workout, so I'd work with him. So a lot of the players that were here,、um, Davon Reed, like I'd coached against all these guys. So I was kind of like excited, you know, to get an interview here because like, okay, there's very high level talent coming over here. You know,、uh, in our culture in Taiwan, they, like people like like writers serve you for the tea to your、mm -hmm. cup. We'll do like this. Do on the table. Yeah, tap tap. What is it? What is that? What is that? Is that thank you? Oh, that means thank you. Without without、uh, saying it. No, just 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 tap. Right, right, right. So it's it's kind of your way of saying thank yeah, you. Thank you. Oh, really? <laughs> I even don't. I I think like a poker game, you know. No, no, no. Right, no, no, no. I think I'm not. I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I
such a roller coaster this season for all for Kings. Yep. That in the beginning of the season that it's got very high. Like mm -hmm. we raise your little standings in the chart mm -hmm. and everyone says wow, New Taipei Kings is one of the candidates to be the champion. Mm -hmm. But after the mid-season, uh, some of the injuries and in the past eight games you got lost. Mm -hmm. Seven of them. Mm -hmm. So how to say that? Yeah. Just, just, just because injuries or anything that you find is kind of different or like find some problems in your system? Yeah, well, well the reality is um, we didn't have uh, our full roster, mm -hmm. so that makes a difference not having you know, certain um, you know, of our main players that could play. And I think first um, that hit the team probably a little bit more emotionally. And so there are a couple games we had where it was just, I think, poor effort that wasn't necessarily, it wasn't basketball that was beating us, it was more the mental side. Mm -hmm. And so we had to rewind and kind of start back over and practice and kind of start from the beginning. So I started doing some drills that I would do at the beginning of training camp to get us back to just playing hard for an entire game and just resetting our mind, focusing again. That's something that we were able to do, get back to playing hard through an entire game. And that's what we wanted to do leading into the playoffs. So it wasn't necessarily about winning. We want to win every game, but it was about perspective, having the right mind frame to be able to go from, hey, we're not playing hard. Now we're playing hard. Now we're ready to play in the playoffs. Talking about the defense, yep. we always say that offense you win the show, but mm -hmm. defense you win the champion. Right. But we know, we know that the motion offense is pretty great, pretty mm -hmm. smooth in King's system. Yep. But the defense, not so much. Mm -hmm. And as for the playoff, it's coming. Mm -hmm. So how do you adjust or how do you focus, emphasize on the defensive side? So actually the majority of stuff we do is focused on the defensive end. Defensively, um, the system is very different from what Taiwan's used to. So I'm for example, still having to... For, for example, like how different? Yeah, so in, in Taiwan, what let me rephrase that, not in Taiwan, but internationally compared to the NBA, oh. you have a lot of basketball where there's rotations. Mm -hmm. So in the NBA, you try to limit rotations because on offense, there's two things you want to do. You want to create advantages, mm -hmm. five on four, mm -hmm. four on three, or size two on or, one. Or size advantage. Size advantage, but especially, um, you know, two on one, three on two. You want those advantages yes. as much as possible. Second, you want to create closeouts. Mm -hmm. So, you know, if a player is helping here, then he has to run out to a player. Yep. There's going to be more space. So yep. you want to create advantages and closeouts. So that's what our offense does. It puts guys in those situations. But what a lot of teams do internationally is they, they rotate all the time. They'll, they'll be in one action and then they rotate. But when you do that defensively, you're automatically putting yourself at a disadvantage. Okay. So the NBA tries to limit rotations so you can have an advantage on defense and you're not given the offense advantage oh. by chance. And so a lot of guys have different habits through that rotation where they're wanting to overhelp or take shortcuts. Um, and the NBA, you, you want to limit that so you can help. And actually, when we've had some of our best defensive games or series, we've been a very, very, very good defensive team. Um, but, you know, different players being in and out you know, you need to have the right personnel to fit those scenarios. So it's made it difficult, you know, from a learning perspective, guys have had to break habits that they've had their entire yes. life. Um, and that's why not being here for training camp made a huge difference in being able to input that entire system. So that's a big, big difference between uh, my philosophy and a, and a Taiwanese philosophy that a lot of these guys are used to. For example, what some teams will do is say ball handler, screener, this guy will show, this, this dribbler will go over the top, and then he'll help. Then these oh, other guys I see, here, I see. they have to rotate, they have to rotate. So when you pass, now close out, close yes. out, rotations, because and you're giving them an advantage. It's possible like a center, right? Mm -hmm. So they have to help, but you, you, don't, you don't want that to happen. Yeah, so you, get, you need good technique because what we try to do is rather than having five guys guard the pick and roll, we try to put ourselves in situations 
where only these two guys are guarding the pick and roll, and all these guys have to do are help and get back okay. rather than rotating. Because if you pass and you're rotating, then you're creating closeouts. You're giving them an advantage before they even did anything. Okay, I see. And so that's that's why it was critical to me to get uh, players who understood um, my system. Ex NBA players, you guys like Tom. I coached Tom. I coached uh, Dre. I coached um, you know I coached against Chris McCullough. Um, you know Byron coming in. He understand like those guys understand the concepts. So being able to teach them, it's easier for them to understand because they know. Kind of what those rotations are, where they can help, um, where they don't have to rotate. For some of the locals, it's it's still new. They, it's they different. Just want to switch. Yeah, it's like so, hey. So they don't like big ball. They don't like big angle of change, or they don't like just do that kind of very. In in, is I I I just heard it should be like if you want to say, he needs these two guys to switch the 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 switch 那对我们来讲，哎，如果我们打的话，因为其实亚洲的身材会比较相近，所以其实我们是可以做 off switch。对，好，那刚才呢，其实听完了 Ryan 教练讲这些的内容，其实我我觉得我是蛮压抑。而且我们有点像信手拈来，所以 Ryan 教练他常常会把那个战术板放在床边嘛。对对对,對。就是有时候突然灵感来，那在这边就是这些就是他的防守者跟。进攻球员，他常常你把人家进攻球员喝，你把人家防守球员喝掉。就是他 ，sorry， sorry， 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 Yeah, almost no, no, nobody. 就是应该没有人在台湾过去是没有打过篮球，或者是当上总教练。对对。Obviously, here there's not as as many teams, but the NBA there's there's 30 jobs, and most of them, or there's 30 head coaching jobs, 30 teams, and most of them are filled by, uh, you know, ex players or people that have had you know connections, been around the game their whole life. Um, you can get in. Um, you know, one. I think if you know somebody, that's the most important thing. You know, I didn't have any any connections, but um, there's a lot of jobs that are unpaid that you can unpaid. get. Unpaid? You mean Un like you did it for free? Yes. So that's that's how I was able to get in and work in professional basketball. Like I had a background. Um, I had a basketball background and had coached, um, but I had proven everywhere that I was willing to work. I had the references. Um, and just getting one internship, you know, an unpaid internship. Like I had many jobs where I didn't get paid, and my living situation I had to pay for rent. And so there were there were many years where I wasn't making any money. Um, I was paying for rent, um, and but that's like I knew I trusted my abilities. I was just kind of waiting for a chance, you know, to actually make money because getting an unpaid job is easier than getting a paid job. Yeah, of course. So. You know that's that was kind of um, you know it's very difficult to get a job, but to move up is even more difficult. Oh, this Taiwan 不得了哎！台湾的话，这个会被那个会被上网说法法规啊，低卡会上，低卡会上，会被会被说是惯老板说哇，这个没有钱还叫我来说你只钱当猴子。对，这这个我们这种方式我们就要收个学徒。对对对，收个学徒。可是就呃，作为像 Ryan 教练这样子的背景，他过去其实并不是球。啊，也并不是专业说打到 N C W 一级的选手，但他还是想要在篮球这条路上有发展，他就知道说他必须要先做一些可能，我觉得可能算是别人不愿意的事情，让你被看对，然后让你可以被看到。没错，因为你如果你没有第一个被看到机会的话，你就没有后面第二三四的机会。我觉得其实今天跟 Ryan 教练聊了很多，其实包含从。我们东方西方的篮球文化，他个人的一些背景，然后还有像在国王队这一季，他所刚才对刚才刚才那个进攻者跟防守者都都在场上，现在都在桌上。对，因为我们有没有聊一聊？哎，觉得说很想知道，可是文字有点抽象。对，哇，他他他直接对拍上对，我们刚刚才把我们的防守热给给,给喝掉了，跟进攻者给吃掉了。那还讲到了，比如说他在这个在职场上面。的一些个人，这是个比较少听到，就是跟篮球这完全无关，完全是他在选择职业上面，他觉得说可能需要他先付出一些什么，让别人看到，他才有第二个机会、第三个机会，才能够到台湾来当国王队总教练。我觉得其实这个在今天有蛮多事情是，除了篮球之外，其实是很可以思考
。对，因为这个其实这样状况不止在篮球上面，我觉得在任何的你想要尝试的事物，就是年轻的小朋友们都是，我觉得都是非常有帮助。Great talk, coach. Oh, I appreciate it. Yeah, it was a lot of fun talking basketball. Do you, do you enjoy it today? Yeah, no. Today's been great. Through and through, getting to learn a few new things here. Uh, you know, through the traditional way of doing things, it was a lot of fun. It was, it was a great way to get outside of basketball for a little bit. Because in our this time of filming, the Ryan Jolly started preparing to enter into their training. They are now focusing on their training. So we also used this time to meet Ryan Jolly. We're talking about that after the shooting. That you need to go back to practice and prepare for the playoffs. Yes, that's right. And hopefully, that you need to go back to practice and prepare for the playoffs. Correct. And hopefully You have a very good, strong playoff season. No, I appreciate that. Yeah, we're we're close to getting everybody healthy. So,、um, but for us, it's、uh, it's the mindset. Whoever's there, you know, we got to be ready to go.、Um, we're only guaranteed three games,、mm -hmm. um, but yeah, hopefully we can make a little bit of noise. It'd be really exciting for us being a new team to be able to, you know, make a little bit of a playoff run. Good luck all the way. Thank you. Appreciate that. See you in the home game. Absolutely. I'll see you there. 我们这期节目呢，非常感谢邀请到了国王队的 Ryan Marshawn 总教练，另外还有彭尊在节目呢跟我们分享一些蛮有趣的故事。那我们也希望呢，国王队在接下来的比赛呢，不论输赢都拿出精彩的内容。球场第一排，我们下次再见，拜拜，拜拜 ，Thanks guys。